So my name is Madi Akil. I am a PhD student at Karlsson University in Sweden. And today I'm going to present our paper, Non-Interactive Privacy Preserving Civil Free Authentication Scheme in Valence. So this paper is done along my supervisors, Leonardo Martucci, also from Karlsson University, and uh, Jeppe Kochman from uh, Redbound University in the Netherlands. So I would like to start this uh, presentation by first uh, talking talk, uh, talking about the related work and how they um, uh, how they make an architecture to in order to uh, create a privacy preserving uh, vanet or vehicular ad hoc system. So on top they have a scheme of authority which is responsible for uh, initializing the whole system, uh, and then they have uh, certificate authorities that are responsible for. Uh, uh, for creating certificates for the vehicles, as well as revoking these certificates and uh, distributing certificate uh, revocation lists, CRLs. Uh, after that, they have uh, pseudonym uh, authorities that are uh, responsible for uh, generating pseudonyms for, uh, for the vehicles that are using the system. And then they have uh, RSUs, uh, which are roadside units that uh, create uh, that create a transmission uh, medium between uh, the vehicles and the authorities. Uh, and at the end, of course, uh, the vehicles, which uh, the whole system is created for for them, and they communicate with each other to exchange uh, messages. So we have uh, identified a few problems in uh, uh, on this uh, architecture. First of all. Uh, since uh, this system requires uh, RSU for communication uh, and uh, these RSUs need to be deployed all over the countries, uh, this makes the infrastructure very expensive, hindering its uh, adaptation. Uh, also, as I said before, the CAs are responsible for uh, distributing certificate uh, revocation lists, and these lists should be uh, distributed periodically uh, to the vehicles uh, via RSUs. However, sometimes a vehicle is driving in a road with no access to an uh, RSU, um, uh, risking that that vehicle will have an outdated version of uh, this uh, CRL. And then uh, that vehicle could authenticate another vehicle, even though that vehicle had a revoked certificate, creating a security problem in the system. Uh, the other one is uh, that uh, this system depends on pseudonyms, uh, pseudonyms to anonymize uh, vehicles. And uh, these vehicles cannot generate their own pseudonyms, but they needed to uh, communicate with uh, with the pseudonym authority, which generate uh, a list of pseudonyms or a pool of pseudonyms for each vehicle. And then each vehicle, when it wants to communicate with another vehicle, it will append one pseudonym at a time. Uh, however, when uh, this pool is empty, this uh, vehicle will have to communicate with the pseudonym authority again to get another pool. But if that vehicle is in a place also with no access to an RSU, uh, then uh, that vehicle is forced now to reuse one of the pseudonyms that it has used before, creating a privacy and linkability problem in the system. Uh, so after identifying these problems, we wanted to create a solution that uh, does not have these problems and also with, uh, with a less uh, complicated uh, architecture. Uh, and before starting with that, uh, we wanted to define the privacy requirements in order to create a privacy preserving uh, vanet infrastructure. And for that, we have identified uh, conditional anonymity, which means like a vehicle should always remain anonymous when driving. Uh, however, if it misbehaves, then that anonymity uh, is conditional and then it should be de-anonymized. Uh, uh, also, in our system, we needed to define uh, epochs, which are like time, pe time periods. And during uh, these time periods, the vehicles should be linkable or the messages from the vehicles should be linkable. So if one vehicle is sending multiple messages during one epoch, uh, the receiver should know that these uh, are coming from one vehicle for safety reasons and planets. Uh, however, when the epoch is done and the new epoch has started, all the new messages that are sent in the new epoch are unlinkable to the ones uh, to the previous ones received. Uh, also, the system should be civil free. So uh, one vehicle should not be able to pretend to be many vehicles at the same time. Uh, and also we should uh, prevent impersonation as well. So one vehicle should not be able to pretend to be another vehicle in our system. So after identifying our privacy requirements, we uh, we started studying attribute-based uh, credentials, or ABCs, which are uh, digital equivalent of 
of passports or driver license or any user ID or, or identification, really. And these uh, ABCs uh, include uh, like uh, user attributes, which are issued or signed by, by an issuer uh, that, uh, that believes that these attributes belong to the user. Uh, and these ABCs have some uh, properties such as using ABC, a user could uh, prove possession of a selection of uh, his attribute. Uh, moreover, uh, the receiver of uh, this proof could also do, do offline verification. So uh, she could uh, verify this proof without contacting any third party or entity. Uh, also using ABCs, uh, a user will be able to generate privacy preserving identifiers or uh, pseudonyms, which are used for uh, anonymization. So all these uh, properties make, make uh, attribute based uh, credentials very suitable to be used in, uh, in Vernet communication, which allowed us to construct, uh, uh, allowed us to construct this new Vernet architecture, which as you can see here is uh, much simpler than before since we have no use for uh, RSUs or even uh, pseudonym authorities. Uh, so we completely got rid of them. Uh, however, we still use a scheme authority, which is also still used to initialize the whole system. Uh, we also still use uh, certificate authorities or CAs, which are responsible for uh, registering vehicles. Uh, so, uh, so new vehicles will uh, contact the CA and submit their uh, attributes or information. Then the CA will create an attribute-based credential for them. Uh, and that is basically the only time where vehicles in our system need to communicate uh, with, a, with an entity or a third party. Uh, so CAs in our system also act as uh, inspectors, meaning that um, if one vehicle misbehaves, that CA will be able to de-anonymize that vehicle when it receives uh, reports about it. Uh, and um, so you could see like the role of the CA could be done or fulfilled by a transportation agency of the country. Uh, so now that the vehicle is registered and uh, have an ABC, it can start communicating with other vehicles. So uh, as I said before, the goal of Vanet is to allow vehicles to exchange messages such as like its speed, uh, its heading or traffic information around it. Uh, and many other type of messages. So in order to do that in our system, uh, we first, the scheme authority starts by defining uh, an epoch, uh, which is uh, shared and uh, synchronous between all the vehicles. So at the start of each vehicle, uh, of each epoch, uh, vehicles will generate a pseudonym, which is bound to the epoch. Uh, then the vehicles will create a non-interactive zero knowledge proofs of their uh, ABC. Uh, and to achieve conditional anonymity, we, we have used uh, verifiable encryption, which means that uh, uh, another vehicle could verify that uh, the ciphertext received is actually an encryption uh, of a certain attribute uh, that, uh, that is defined before. Uh, uh, and only the CA will be able to de-anonymize uh, that attribute. So the verifier could verify that it is an encryption of one of the required uh, attributes but cannot know the attribute itself. Uh, so uh, since pseudonyms are bound to epochs in our system, a vehicle can only uh, generate one pseudonym at a time um, uh, during uh, the epoch. And this uh, prevents civil attacks and allows us to, uh, to create linkability within the epoch. So when a vehicle sends multiple messages during the epoch, uh, a receiver will be able to link them and, uh, and know that they came from the same vehicle. And this is actually a safety requirement in Vanets. However, uh, when a new epoch uh, starts, all the new messages received are unlinkable to the old uh, to the old ones. Uh, also, we do not need uh, certificate revocation lists because uh, if a user tries to create a false proof, uh, the, the receiver will be able to detect that uh, the the verif uh, and and the verification will not pass. So, uh, without need of, of for uh, CRL or even to communicate with any entity. Uh, and this is uh, because of, of the properties of uh, ABCs. So all of, the, all, all of this communication is done offline, meaning that the entire communication between vehicles and the proofs and the verifications are done without any interaction with the third party. Uh, also the generation of pseudonyms and uh, so the only time a vehicle will be required to communicate with the CA now is if 
it needs to send a report uh, about misbehaving vehicles uh, where the CA will be will be able to de-anonymize it based on the uh, on the verifiable encryption. So to conclude this talk, we have uh, created uh, a privacy-preserving authentication scheme in Vanis using or leveraging the uh, IDMX uh, anonymous credential system uh, while achieving all the privacy goals that we uh, we defined earlier. And we have also actually defined more privacy goals, but uh, please refer to the paper for that. Uh, we have also implemented our system um, and for more information about the, our results and the timing, please also refer to the paper. And as a future work, we are uh, planning in order to, uh, to have a better computational efficiency system, as well as our um, security analysis showed that our system is still vulnerable to uh, replay attacks. Uh, and in the next version, we are planning to solve that. And with that, I will uh, end my talk and would like to thank you all for listening. And if you want to discuss more, please uh, send me via this email address. So thank you very much. And I'm open for questions if you have any now. So one question is, can you allow uh, async asynchronous uh, updates of the um, the epochs for each week? Uh, no, uh, we cannot have that. So uh, everyone should share the same app with all of the vehicles because of uh, pseudonym generations, they are bound to the epoch. And when a vehicle receives a pseudonym, it also needs to verify it. Uh, and that is done also based on the fact that uh, everyone shares the same epoch. So that means you have to have a worldwide synchronized clock. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. OK.